Senator Jabari Brisport and Elizabeth Benjamin from the Community Service Society of New York. Thank you both so much for being here. Thanks, Dan. Of course. Thank you. Anytime. So Senator Brisport, I want to go to you first. The legislative session has ended. The New York Health Act did not pass. Why do you think that is? Because for the first time, we have a majority of Democrats in both chambers that have signed on to the bill. So why aren't we seeing it move? There were a confluence of factors that worked together to stall and stop the New York Health Act from coming to a vote. I would say outside pressures came from lobbyist groups that shared misleading information about job loss and increased premiums. There was also um, outside influence against the Health Act from some public sector unions, like my own former union, the UFT, which supported uh, the New York Health Act in 2015, but whose leadership um, was very against it now. Um, there were also, just on the inside, um, some legislators who had co-sponsored the Health Act, but then um, asked leadership not to bring it to a vote. And um, ultimately, the decision fell on leadership to choose to bring it to a vote or not to, and she chose not to. And in the assembly, you know, the speaker chose not to. So it's like we're seeing a situation where people publicly support it, but privately are saying hold off. Is that correct? Yes. So. I want to come back to that if we have time, but I want to go to Elizabeth first, because as we talk about the politics of this, I think the policy of it is very important. So the New York Health Act would create a uh, single payer system in New York, but a lot of people may not know what that means. So let's start broad. If I'm just a regular New Yorker, I have my private insurance, or maybe I don't even have insurance, how would my life change under the New York Health Act? What would I be looking at? Sure. I mean, you're cha- depending on who you are, your your life would change not so much, but or it would change a lot. But in any event, it would be better. Um, and this is why if you're uninsured, you would have health insurance because every single person in New York State who's a resident of New York State, regardless of immigration status, if you're a resident, you would be eligible. So we have a million people that would instantly get covered. Fantastic. If you are someone who's on Medicaid or Medicare right now, if you're on Medicare right now, the program for the older folks, you would get dental and vision. That's better. But otherwise, it would basically be the same thing. It's the same kind of coverage we're talking about. It's really Medicare for all. I think single payer doesn't really make a lot of sense to people. It's really a Medicare for all type of program. The third thing is if you have job-based coverage, you're probably facing a deductible right now. And you every year, more and more of your salary goes to paying for health insurance premiums. They, you know, we get more co-pays, higher deductibles, and more cost sharing being put upon um, the employees. And if you're an employer, you know, you just look and like this, they just filed their rate request for next year, even though they all made, the insurance companies made out like bandits last year because no one used health care. they're asking for 9% rate increases. Why? So, you know, we have this just uncontrollable cost spiral up that needs to be regulated. One great way to do it is through the New York Health Act. There's other great ways. You could do you know, hospital price regulation. You could do global payments. But the New York Health Act is the best because it solves all those problems. Less bureaucracy for people, less cost sharing for people, um, less headache for employers to have to deal with brokers and whatnot, and, you know, um, and more cost controls. So people would be paying nothing out of pocket, including that premium that might be coming out of their paycheck right now. And we also wouldn't have network restrictions. So like, for example, me, I look up which doctors I can go to and which ones are not going to take my insurance that would be eliminated under the New York Health Act. But I think something that people get hung up on is they're paying their premium right now and that would be eliminated under the New York Health Act, but it'd be replaced by a payroll tax for people making above $25,000. I wanna stick with you, Elizabeth, just for a second. So do we know if generally people would be paying less under the New York Health Act on that payroll tax than they're paying for their premiums for healthcare? I mean, I, as I understand it, and please correct me, Senator Brisport, if I have this wrong, but most people would be paying no more than they are what they are currently paying. I think some of the higher income people might pay a little bit more. Is that right, Senator Brisport? That's, that's correct. The vast majority of New Yorkers would see the same or less in, in annual payments to what for health insurance. 
So to that point, Senator Brisport, how do you convince people that single payer health care is the way to go in New York? I feel like just the concept of single payer has just become so political, both in New York and in the country, where people hear single payer and they're just immediately turned off by it. So how do you convince people that that would be the way to go and have this fundamental change in New York? I think the biggest thing is convincing people that health care and insurance are not the same thing. You know, you tell people that their insurance might change and they automatically, they freak out. They think, oh, I might not be able to see my current doctor. But that's the thing. People like their doctors. They don't like they necessarily like their insurance provider. And it's important to hammer home that the New York Health Act, any single payer program or Medicare for pro program would expand options. You'd be able to see your same doctor and also other doctors by eliminating in-network, in out-of-network um, restrictions. I'd like to also just jump in here. I mean, everybody likes their health insurance fine when they're not sick, but no one likes our health care system when you are. And let me tell you why. It's not just the insurance companies. The insurance companies are part of the problem, but also the providers. They bill you. We have one guy that went in for one kidney stone and came out with 28 different bills. Mm. That would not happen under the New York Health Act. Like one kidney stone does not, you know, a, a bill from the anesthesiologist mm -hmm. and the surgeon and that, you know, it goes on and on and on. And so we talk, we need to talk about how to make our program, our whole health insurance and healthcare system more simple for people. This is an amazing way to do that through the New York Health Act. There are many other ways to do. Patient Medical Debt Protection Act, which also did not pass this session, um, would be a good start. We need to start thinking, doing, we need to do something because the system right now is broken from the patient's perspective. So Senator Brisport, for New Yorkers that are not insured, where would this legislation leave them if it passes? Uh, it would bring them into uh, the fold and bring them into having health insurance. And why I'm so scared right now is that, well, one, we have a million New Yorkers that are uninsured, but then millions more who are underinsured. And it's scary for people who are in either of those categories who will be experiencing long-term effects of COVID, who are locked into a dangerous job because they want the health insurance. I'm scared for women who are just staying in abusive relationships because they need the health insurance from their partner. There are a lot of people that could be freed and liberated from this legislation if it passes. And that's the, another reason why we should be doing it. So the premise of this next question is going to sound horrible. So I apologize to people that are watching for this. So under the New York Health Act, everybody's going to be covered and there will be no restrictions in terms of coverage and what doctors you can see and where you can go. Elizabeth, do we in New York have the healthcare infrastructure to support that, support people that may seek the medical care that they were afraid to seek now under yeah. their current insurance coverage? This is the pent up demand argument. So <laughs> and so there's this big worry that, you know, there's all this uh, pent up demand. Well, we had that same argument in when we enacted the Affordable Care Act. Everybody said there'd be huge lines and people wouldn't, there weren't on the primary care doctors and there would be, you know, the whole system would be shot. Well, guess what? We implemented the New York, the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare, no problems, no lines, no complaints. The only things were, you know, like a little couple of like things on the margins, but this pent up demand that they all said would be there wasn't there. It just doesn't exist because you know what? People don't, it's not like people sit on, you know, on July 4th weekend and say, oh, I really want to go get surgery next week. I mean, it just doesn't happen. It's not real. And the same thing happened in 1965 and 1963 when we did Medicaid, Medicare, like it never happens. There's no pent up demand, doesn't happen. So, Senator Brisport, on the other side of this issue, you had mentioned that some claims are going around about the impact of the New York Health Act. One is that it would be a job reducer in New York, and we're looking at health insurance jobs and maybe some ripple effects. How do you convince people that this is the right way to go when they may be looking at job losses in the state and some ripple effects that may affect them? I think first things first, it's important to mention that inside the uh, New York Health Act, there is a provision for funding for a, like a just transition for people who need to retrain or look for other jobs. But in a wider sense, it's about universal health care as a job creator. Because once your once your health care is no longer tied to your employer, it frees up your options. That's going to be great for people who want to freelance, start their own business, who want who are running a small business and struggling to bring on more people because of health care costs. So you can think of it as a job creator rather than a job killer. Well, I think there is going to be a lot of discussion on this moving forward, especially as the legislation gains more support in the legislature. But we do have to leave it there. Elizabeth Benjamin from the Community Service Society of New York and Senator Jabari Brisport, thank you both so much. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Thank you.